Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris where we are getting kind of close here actually to our initial expansion phase being over and that's a really good sign actually. We've got these four systems to take and then we've got Traber over here but that has a psionic entity in it. Rule of thumb on these skulls that I use is 30k to be able to defeat them. Obviously we're at about 15, we're at about half that. But that said, we are going to increase our naval capacity up to, well, not our capacity, but our overall ship count up to 160. Okay, so that's definitely something that's going to be happening, but we're going to be spending our alloys for quite some time on getting ship upgrades done. This generator world here needs a job, and it can't actually get any additional generator districts. We may want to consider putting an alloy foundry here, or... Well, an alloy foundry, a resource processing center, and then an industrial district. Something like that. So that would do the trick. We could also consider clearing off this quicksand basin. Which, sure, that seems fine. There's a lot of tile blockers on Nishira Prime. Noted. We could certainly start working on clearing some of these. Like this quicksand basin. A lot of these were lacking tech to clear, so that's fine. Xanabod Prime, of course, the main concern here is devastation. This has improved dramatically, and this will eventually become a mining station or a mining world, but for the time being, it is what it is, unfortunately. So, crystal mines are definitely something we wouldn't mind putting in here. We could certainly do that for right now. Now, our construction ship up here isn't going to get the alloys to build this hyper relay for quite some time, I'm afraid. So, for now, we're going to be kind of idling here. We did just get Seifer 4A terraformed over, though. So, we absolutely want to colonize here. We need to buy in the food that we need for it. And, yeah, we're a bit low on our energy credits. So, we'll sell off some minerals for that. We've got the food now. We needed 425. And then we need 170 alloys, which pretty much means we buy like this and then queue this up immediately. And then construction is complete. So we're going to continue consuming those relatively regularly, right? So here in Olkad, we are currently done. We need to head over to Enif and build a star base here. Now that is going to take alloys. Our upgrades are eating up our alloy income, right? There's no doubt about that. However, right now we could build the star base. So we're going to do that. Phenomenal. We have found an, anomaly. an unusually deliberate geometric configuration of minerals drifts through the debris belt by TE-972 and is possibly of alien origin. We'll definitely look into that. We are also beginning to work on some of our archaeological sites, so we'll get there on those as well. Cool. Now, there's that raiding fleet. It came in via the Tunari Vortex. Okay. Sure. We'll just head on up over here for now. In gentle orbit around the massive TE-972 floats a portable data bank. Scooped up by the ISF Zof Zofmul, it's found to contain text in some alien language. The vocabulary is not wholly unfamiliar, but the syntax is disconcertingly complex. Science Officer Oberliut recommends a more thorough study to decipher the text's contents and origins. And we'll definitely do that. So that is over here. So we'll research those project or that project in the system. And we'll research here as well. That's debris, I believe. Yeah, in both of those cases, that's debris. Interesting. So we're going to go deal we with this rating fleet. We're strong enough to do it. We will take some losses, though. And these will eventually get replaced. So that's not the end of the world. We're going to head up over this direction. Seems relatively fine. Our mining hive is lost. Yeah, they're going to take out some of these. It's very rude of them, but it's it's fine. So we're going to head down to Garia next, and we could certainly consider building Hyper Relay up in Orval. So they're just we heading... Are, are they heading knowledge. straight up to Asland? No, they're heading over towards Chella. Okay. We Sounds good. So we're going to head over there as we well. Garia is now done, so we're going to build our star base there. And we just finished what? We just finished shields. Okay, noted. I do think advanced shields would be good. I'm going to grab colony development speed, though. So for now, that'll be fine. 
The mind of Governor Oberpilks was removed from the collective at the age of 91. We're the Stinger entity. We will endure. Indeed, we will. So this science ship is not doing anything. And for the moment, I want it to go over to Runa and start excavating this site. A thick layer of glass and metal covers this otherwise barren planet, perhaps hinting at some sort of cataclysmic event in its past. Excellent. So that's all fine. Now the question is, are they just going to bombard here at Chelop? Oh yeah, that's their plan. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're absolutely fine with this. So we're going to park right here. We'll arrive there in about 60 days. Looks good. Our construction is complete. So we're done in Garia, and we're going to head over to Matar now. And we need these guys to head on over to Capra, and we'll excavate this site. The surface of Capra 6 is utterly without precedent in all our exploration to date. Vast geological areas, from mountain ranges to entire continents, are suddenly cut by shapes far too geometrically regular to be natural in origin. The otherwise natural-looking environments are suddenly broken by entirely flat planes, perfect triangles, and sharply angled corners. At present, any explanation of this baffling phenomenon is pure conjecture. Are we settling out here? Yes, yes we are. Cool. So that's all good. We are, of course, terraforming up over here. That'll be done eventually. And we're ready to jump on into Chelop. Do it. So in we go, and we're going to fight these guys here. We should win against them fairly easily. There we go. Like I said, we may take a few losses here and there, but we'll defeat them. Excellent. The Larongo fleet that vowed to raid our space has been destroyed as a result of a fleet action in the Chelib system. No survivors have been reported found amongst the debris. Let this be a lesson to their kind. It's not pronounced debris, of course. It's pronounced debris. We're going to head on over here. Ah, oh, that's over there. I gotcha. So I'm going to redirect, I think, one of our science ships, this one, over to Chelib. We'll research that first. Then we're going to head over to Capra. Okay. And we also do want to study this, and we'll get that going. Perfect. Excellent. So that's all underway nicely. We're out of food, and we should do something about that. We'll buy in a thousand food for now. Our starbase in the Markov system reports that Technology the Orlin Memorial conceived. Caravan Fleet has evacuated and abandoned a decrepit ship, now in unstable orbit around the system's central star. So we could search it, or we could let the sun swallow it, and that's what we're going to do for right Our now. Colony development speed plus 50% is good. We can get it again. Sure. So that seems fine. We are now done constructing in Orville. So we can certainly go build in Asland. There we go. The text, its title roughly translates to regional ruler, is writ written in a presumably ancient dialect of the Valert tongue, spoken in the Valert Enlightened Kingdom. The text is doubtlessly of some historical import to them and might contain valuable insights. Hmm. Let's divine its secrets they need not know. 51 influence sounds good. So that's what we'll do for the time being. And this construction ship, I want to go and definitely build a hyper relay over in Mecca's. Now we're currently lacking rare crystals for that, and that's okay. We'll get those soon enough. So our food shortage is definitely Technology an issue. Conceived. Ecological adaptation is now done, which is great. And we are going to grab... There's a lot of good stuff here. For the time being, we're going to grab tile blocker clearances. That'll be fine. So we need to get a lot of these stations built, right? That's definitely a thing that needs to happen, but that'll just we're happen passively over time. And we're working on colonizing a number of we these locations, or, well, two of them. So that's fine. Stormfire cannons? Okay, yeah, that's actually some decent stuff there. I like it. And down we head to Capra. Perfect. Once down on the surface of Beetlejuice 7A, it was clear that a civilization had indeed flourished here until as recently as a few centuries ago. At some point, a sudden and total catastrophic event gripped the world. Apparently, some sort of internecine struggle between nation-states led to a terminal exchange of weapons of mass destruction. Oddly, although the surface is scoured clean and dead, the sky is alive with the shifting hues of a perpetual aurora borealis. 
is a striking vista, the desolate steel and stone carcasses of entire cities, painted by the vibrant, scintillating colors dancing in the sky. And we'll keep digging. Phenomenal. So our food shortage is going to continue for a little bit here. We may end up, well, actually, I'm not sure what we're going to end up doing about it for the time being. For right now, I feel like there's not a lot that we can do for this moment. We'll get there. I do want to get these ships upgraded, but for now, we do definitely need to go through these and make sure that we have our upgraded shields, right? So we'll do this, and yes, you can enable auto-upgrade. I don't like it, though. I like to have manual control over this. It's not great, but I do like it. So we don't have enough power to run this as is. We're probably going to have to downgrade this to level two shields. All of them to level two shields. Okay. So for now, our cruisers are going to be not great. For sure. Hello, console. Imagine meeting you here. Cool. So let's get these upgrading then. That's going to be 2,183 and this is going to be 1869. That's a lot of alloys, to be clear. But we need to get it done eventually. Okay, so that's all underway. It'll definitely take some time. No doubt about that. We're going to be settling in Seafort very soon. That's all good. Our food situation is going to continue to be a situation for a little bit here. And we're of course lacking alloys and rare crystals for our hyper relays, so that will take a little bit of time. That's fine. Multiple non-verbal communication systems have emerged independently on Kerpus 4. With conflicting sets of imagery and hieroglyphs, the inhabitants are still centuries away from forming a dominant language. Interestingly, one of the writing systems has a similar grammatical structure to our own. If Kerpus 4 society were to adopt this system, they could become culturally malleable in the future. Their language is their own. Okay, so this is our hive capital here. I definitely think that we get food processing centers and an agriculture district here. It's a temporary scenario, but that'll be, I think, necessary. We need to get that going. So we'll come down over here, and we're currently, like, building hyper relays down this direction towards our capital. The main problem, of course is the fact that we Technology are working conceived. on upgrades, right? The Pictlings declared rivalries on us. Okay, sure. Colony development speed finishes, and from here we could certainly grab something along the lines of... Advanced combat rolls? Advanced shields? I kind of want to do a quick reroll, though. Improved reactor boosters. I want to get level 4 power generation. This alone, though, will let us get our cruisers upgraded. So that'll be good. Technology We're going to need to buy more food as well, so we'll do that for now. Tile blocker clearance, always great. Building slots and colony development speed and habitat max districts. But food from agri drones is something we need to address we immediately. So we're blocker. working on that already with this agriculture district, but this will also help. So that's good. We've got a tech world down here that needs a tile blocker clearance. We'll deal with you guys in a moment here. Okay, they're kind of in the way. Yeah, we could certainly get some energy credits here and then clear out one of these, the impassable mountains. Okay, what do you got? Spawning pool stimulators. Pop growth speed. The low, low price of a science ship, excluding the crew. Hmm. Deal. Which one is it? Which one did we lose? So we've got this science ship up here. We've got this science ship down here. We lost the one over here. Gotcha. So we should definitely output another science ship here. And that is going to be moved up to the top of the queue. And we're going to get that sent out over this way. 20 days on that. But that's definitely worth it for the 10% pop growth. So that's great. We don't lose the crew, so we can just send it back out over here to... Actually, it wasn't this one that we were excavating the site on. We were excavating a site somewhere else entirely. It would have been, I think, up in, like, Ogma? Where was it that we did that? Hang on. I don't recall this. 
or this. They must have been working on something else entirely. We don't want to do BAM just yet. So we're going to head up over to Nisiskel for now. So that'll be fine. Our survey ship has scanned Nisiskel 5 and detected some artificial structures worth a closer look. Unnervingly, there are no signs of any population down there. Unnerving indeed. So we're going to continue to work on these upgrades, of course. We just lost an admiral, and that was this admiral. So we're going to hire in a new one. Hull and armor regen is actually pretty good. So we'll do that for now. Phenomenal. Okay, we established our colony on Capra. And from here, of course, we need a spawning pool. Absolutely. And we'll put in a synaptic node and a hive district as per usual. We also finished up a tech here. That was our improved reactor booster. And antimatter reactors is what we're angling for. Perfect. Capra, Capra 6 is virtually fractal. The same wild collisions of natural and obviously artificial geography visible from space are replicated on the personal scale planet side. There are mountains with perfect pyramidal bases and jagged, craggy summits. Rough tundra that suddenly becomes a perfectly smooth plain of bare rock. Until another weathered natural formation bisects it. The juxtaposition of irregular borders and rocks scattered among the perfect cubes the size of a microchip or a hab block. As yet, we can only imagine how this could have come to pass, and we'll keep digging on that. Absolutely. Cool. So that's great. We are seeing our alloy count start to go up a little bit, and that's probably because we're working on upgrading specifically our destroyers right now. Yes, that is accurate. We have cleared a blocker. I think that's accurate anyway. Actually, we're working on Corvettes. Never mind. So that's fine. Hmm, I'm researching anomalies, or sublight speed, or basic resource discovery chance. Honestly, none of these are really relevant anymore, but sure, we'll grab that one. That seems fine. We should definitely consider boosting up our tech a little bit, but I feel like our tech is okay. It's not amazing, but I feel like it's okay. Our growth node just finished up. What do we want to go for here? Unity from jobs, or resources from jobs, plus 2.5%. Actually, we're going for resources from jobs. That'll be great. Because that will boost up our alloy income a little bit. Perfect. We lost Oberliut. Okay, where was Oberliut? Which science ship were you in? This one. Cool. So we'll hire in a new scientist here. All of these are the exact same. Okay, we'll go for the youngest. And we'll work on that archaeological site. A unique situation has occurred on Kerbis 4A just as the terraforming efforts are winding down. Our terraforming drones have discovered that it's possible to tidally lock the moon. This occurring naturally can be quite a detriment to a colony. However, doing it during the terraforming process could allow us to exploit the endless solar, solar hours the dayside will receive and generate an obscene amount of energy. We would still have to make a concentrated effort to set up the rest of our industry and housing on the twilight and night side. do it okay so that sounds good we're going to colonize this over here and that is now intentionally tidally locked and we can take a decision presumably after we settle it to achieve its true potential so that sounds absolutely good we've established our colony up here so we're going to grab hello console we're going to grab this that's going to be our spawning pool synaptic node and hive district for now we want to just get that growing this mining world needs a job, and we'll definitely build a mining district. Do we not have access to mining processing centers? Feels kind of weird. I don't know. While excavating the ruins on Nithiskau 5, Obertazen recently vanished without a trace. An extensive research by the other archaeology drones turned up nothing. We have to assume the worst. So, they're currently potentially dead. Potentially. And they are up over here? Yes. So we'll recruit in another scientist here. This is not a big deal. We'll go for the 17-year-old one. Perfect. They all have this archaeology excavation speed bonus, which is fine. That's what we need, right? Technology so that's okay. Conceived. Ah, conglomerated upcyclers. We've been hearing rumors about the impressive Stinger entity for a while now, and we're pleased to make your acquaintance. 
For a nominal contribution of credits, we of the conglomerated upcyclers offer premium, premium salvager services. From engine upgrades to scrapping fleets, whatever your needs, you can count on us. And to ensure that we start off in your good graces, how about a small gift to show our commitment to customer service? And they give us 1,500 alloys. Beautiful. That's very, very nice. So battleships are now done. We could certainly grab foundry drone output. Gas extraction wells, that would be good too. There's a lot of good stuff here, to be honest. I think we go for the foundry drone output. It's going to be kind of slow, but we'll do that for now. So that probably gets us pretty close to all of our upgrades here, right? This is done upgrading at this moment. We can reinforce this fleet, yeah. I'm pretty sure this is done upgrading. Like, I'm pretty sure this is all queued now. Our colony ship is going to be firing soon. And we definitely do want to think about battleships, right? So we can hop over here and... Yeah, this is like full-on artillery. For the time being, this is okay. I don't, I don't mind this being all railguns all the time for the moment. No issue there right now. We definitely want to be in artillery mode. And get a shield here and get a Dura Steel Armor here. There we go. Let's go for auxiliary fire control, probably, for all of these. Yeah, that'll do for now. Hide obsolete components. That's okay. So we'll save this. And while we're at it, let's work on our cruisers here. I would still like to get these shields upgraded. And, of course, we'll have to upgrade our reactor boosters in order to do that. And a ship of this design is currently being built. I'm not sure that's true. Let's cancel all of these for the moment, though. And now we can save this. Perfect. So now the question is, how many battleships do we want in these fleets? Well, we can actually only fit one at the moment. So we'll put one battleship into each of these. There we go. And we can see we need like 10,000 to get this all fully reinforced. That's fine for the moment. So I'd like to go up to 14 destroyers then. So something kind of like this for the moment will do. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. And now we're going to... Yeah, it was all canceled. That's expected. We'll get these cruisers upgrading. Perfect. And we're also going to start reinforcing this fleet. Now... Hang on. Let's build a hyper relay here and a hyper relay here first. We also finished this up. We'll get back to that in a moment. I want to reinforce this fleet now. There we go. The history of Beetlejuice 7A and its lost civilization was uncovered, and although tragic, by galactic standards it was sadly typical. A civilization arose, growing in technological sophistication, if not social and political harmony. Eventually, they created the tools of their own destruction and then used them. If the fate of this world and its denizens was not unique, there was something that was, and it captured the, in the imagination of our scientific minds, the ceaseless aurora borealis effect dancing unperturbed above all the devastation. Upon closer study, the aurora effect in the sky displayed repeating patterns, which defies all previous knowledge of weather systems. Is there some message here? There might be. And we'll look at that. Excellent. This science ship is not currently doing anything, and we want it to be excavating. There we go. So alloys are our primary lack at this moment. However, this forge world has an available job, and we will absolutely put in a resource processing center here. Except we require a hive nexus on the planet, which, of course, requires 25 pop. So for now, I guess we'll just put in... Actually, let's put in an alloy foundry here for the moment. That'll do. Technology conceived. Food from Agrodrones. I like it. So we're doing well on our food now. More tile blocker clearances? Probably. Yeah, let's get some of those cleaned on up. Phenomenal. The discovery of the first crashed flying machine set us on the right path and led to the discovery of a multitude of similar crash sites littering the surface of the planet. Without doubt, these strange dead machines have something to do with the mu mysterious geometrical shapes that dot this world. But the extent of the damage caused by crash landings from high altitude will make analysis difficult. Well, we'll definitely check it. What is this? Oh wow, another one. Okay. A small hidden treasure chamber was recently uncovered by Cole Enuel at the archaeological dig site on Nithiskal 5. Although most of the found trinkets are of little practical use, they have a substantial energy credit value. Cool. 
So we get some energy credits out of it. And with that, it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to continue working on building up our fleets. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Andy McGar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.